I have clicked onto the tropical tidbit for Monday, August 1st, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, we're still tracking Invis 97L here, moving very quickly through the Caribbean today. And what we've seen from it since last night is this area of fairly uh, consistent, moderate to deep convection that has amplified the wave axis, which means it's become much more kinked and sharp today. So you have this very sharp southeasterly flow changing to northeasterly flow here. And what we're waiting is for the northern end of this axis to uh, break and become a closed circulation with westerlies and clock or counterclockwise flow all the way around. And it's difficult to tell um, whether that's happening underneath all of these deep clouds because you can't see the ocean surface. And we were supposed to get a recon flight in there this evening to check whether this has become a tropical storm, but unfortunately the plane had to turn around due to maintenance issues, and so we will not be getting that data tonight. But from what we can tell on visible satellite imagery here, it seems that the low-level vorticity maximum is somewhere in here southeast of Jamaica on the western side of this convective mass, and the mid-level center is still under the convective mass off to the east, so we have what amounts to a mid-level low here and a surface low here. They are not stacked on top of each other, and that is a sign of disorganization, and it wasn't quite this way yesterday. There was some decoupling, but not quite this much, and so what this may indicate is that as the system has come westward, it has encountered some trade winds in the Central Caribbean here that may be even a bit stronger than what it was dealing with yesterday. And so there may be some mid-level shear imparted on the circulation that was not there yesterday. And that may have pushed this low-level center out a little bit farther ahead of the mid-level center back here. But regardless, uh, this does indicate that the system is still somewhat disorganized. And from what we can tell, the circulation is not yet closed. And so by the book, this is not technically a tropical storm yet, but it's kind of a moot point since Jamaica will essentially be getting tropical storm conditions tonight regardless as the system passes by just to the south. And we've already had some deaths, unfortunately, in Hispaniola due to the adverse weather from 97L. So this is already a dangerous, life-threatening weather producer that will be affecting these islands as it moves toward the west. And this is essentially a tropical storm impacting Jamaica overnight tonight with heavy rains and tropical storm force winds and should be taken seriously as such. Now, as this continues west, it will be getting west of that magical 80 west longitude line where here in the Western Caribbean, the trade winds slow down and thus the wind begins to pile up and that enhances rising air in this area of the Caribbean, which means once this gets into this area, things become easier for the system's development. And so we may see it become a bonafide tropical storm once it gets in to the Western Caribbean. And at that point, it will threaten the Yucatan Peninsula and we may be dealing with a strengthening tropical storm making landfall here sometime late on Wednesday night. Now on the larger scale, what we're dealing with is this broad wave envelope. So you can see these uh, northeasterlies coming out of the wave, southeasterlies going into the wave on the right-hand side here. And within this broader wave structure, we have this very amplified tiny little low trying to develop southeast of Jamaica. And so what's going to happen is as this wave axis has tilted upright, it's going to continue in this fashion where the northern end of the wave will move faster and the southern end of the wave moves slower. So it will end up tilting over um, in a negative fashion from southeast to northwest. What that does is when the little vorticity developing here is along the axis in this fashion, it feels the northeasterly flow around the larger wave envelope. So you'll have a big flow like this and a tiny little low trying to form along it. So the steering flow out of the northeast will start to redirect this storm to the southwest a little bit after it passes Jamaica. So although it's been moving due west so far, we may see it take a little bit just a little bit of a southern dip in its track here toward the Gulf of Honduras tomorrow and tomorrow night. And most of the models now agree on that, where the wave essentially steers itself with the larger structure of the wave kind of moving this little storm embedded within it back toward the southwest a little bit. And so this will put it likely in the Gulf of Honduras, Western Caribbean here by Wednesday night, and then it will make landfall somewhere along either Belize or the coast of Mexico along the Yucatan coast here. And uh, this will then become a problem for potentially the rest of Mexico, uh, Mexico's northern coast, if it moves out into the Bay of Campeche. 
and perhaps has a chance to re-strengthen over water on this side, but the exact details of that impossible to know yet, as we do not have a fully formed tropical storm here, and until we know exactly where it forms, the exact landfall location is rather uncertain, and thus whether it spends an appreciable amount of time over water and has time to re-strengthen on the other side of the Yucatan is also uncertain. But as soon as the first NHC forecast comes out, when this finally does form, which seems pretty likely at this point, we will have a better idea. Now here's the GFS model forecast of the upper level flow in about 36 hours on Wednesday morning. The surface low is here, northeast of Honduras on the model, but the upper level flow uh, shows this clockwise uh, nature of this upper level high centered over the western Caribbean as this upper trough to the north weakens and moves off. We see this ballooning upper level divergence over the western Caribbean. This is a favorable environment for thunderstorms to develop and uh, allow the system to strengthen as it moves west. So this is a pretty favorable environment overall combined with the fact that again the trade winds slow down in here and add to convergence in the low levels, divergence in the upper levels. That's a combination that usually allows intensification of incipient tropical cyclones in this area. And uh, we see on the European now we have a storm. Uh, previously the European did not show this developing but we now have a system that is very tight and compact looking a storm tomorrow morning in the model forecast and then you see it turn toward the west northwest and move toward the Yucatan um, as a tropical storm by Wednesday morning and then you see this is Thursday morning so somewhere in between there is the landfall point sometime on Wednesday night along the coast of Belize or Mexico and then you see that on the model it kind of hugs the southern coast of the Bay of Campeche and again it may spend some more time over water and strengthen again uh, that's kind of uncertain at this point but the one more thing to mention that on the model here you see how tight and compact the system is southwest of Jamaica and then you see it actually weaken by a couple of millibars during the following 24 hours and you might ask why would that happen if we've been talking about how favorable the Western Caribbean is compared to the Central Caribbean well it goes back to how this wave will be tilting over into a negative fashion from southeast to northwest and the interaction with the wave tilted in that orientation the interaction of that with the trade winds in the Western Caribbean is such that this circulation may have to deposit some of its momentum into a larger area and, and spread out its energy a little bit. And this can be at the expense of the circulation's strength uh, for at least a brief time. And so what you may find is that this develops with uh, intent tomorrow morning and we have this tiny little vigorous circulation, but then it may have to spread out and reorganize into a larger circulation that may briefly weaken and then start strengthening again as it moves toward the coast. And at that point, we may have a much healthier looking system just before landfall. And so the details about how strong this may get before making landfall are rather ambiguous at this point because there are many many little things going on and interacting here that can influence the intensity of the storm. So we could have anything ranging from a fairly weak tropical storm to even a hurricane is possible as this moves toward the coast. And so the Belize, Mexico, Honduras, and Guatemala should keep a close eye on the NHC forecasts once we do have a tropical storm which seems pretty likely right now and when those forecasts come out we'll have a better idea of what's going on here but there are a lot of possibilities with how strong this can get as it comes toward the coast and we'll have to keep a close eye on it during the next couple of days uh, so stay tuned here and at the national hurricane center for the latest information that's it for today thanks for watching